I tried to drive home from my second fight, and I almost like <laughs> tried to take a left on a bridge, and it was just like. Yeah, there's no, there's no like turns on bridges, you know, because it's because you're over know. a river. <laughs> you're over a river. You saw my blank face, and yeah. you saw someone who does not know how to drive. <laughs> really, you so, don't know how to drive? Actually, neither of us do. No, but wow. even I know that you can't do a left can't midway do a left through a bridge. A bridge. Yeah, oh yeah, not. I guess I've played enough bad Mario Kart right. in my life where I'm just swerving around the bridge. Yeah. You're yeah. like, no, 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 the, the little cloud will bring me back up. Right. That's, it's fine. It's well, fine. Well, it's the cloud, and also sometimes there's like secret routes that get you more cubes. That's true. Oh, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what Did I you was, find any? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. My, instead, my roommate was like, wait till I get off the bridge and pull over and I'm driving home, basically. Uh, oh my God. But yeah, I, I, I walked out and it was so bad because like I felt bad for his, his girlfriend was in town and they were like long distance and she went to UC Santa Barbara and she showed up and like the first thing, the first weekend she does is like she has to drive out to this place and like bumfuck South Carolina, this like gym that's just full of like the worst people that are watching children fight and like basically like and then basically like she has to sit there for like three hours and watch just like just me and other people just beat the hell out of each other and i walked out and i looked at him and he was like and i was like i was like i'm not like i was already in my head about it and then i got caught with um a right hand in the in the first round basically Whoa. and now oh. I, I ended up surviving but the left side of my body went numb so i like like tied him up and then survived the first, and then second and third, arguably won, not well, but arguably won. And then, uh, and then they gave it to him on a on a split decision, which means like one judge goes your way, and two. So, which the means other. they give it to the audience to vote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're like who do you like who won more? This fight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is it Gabby? Is it, yeah, it's like a roast battle. <laughs> yeah. like, is it? and then everyone applauds. <laughs> yeah, clap yeah. for one person. Oh yeah, that was weird. How old were you? I was yeah. twenty twenty. Maybe 2021. 20, okay. Oh my god! And how oh did you get into like wrestling? Um, well, boxing, and I or, was because yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a really bad wrestler, and I but I, an amazing I, boxer is what you're saying. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was all right with the gym, but they, uh, I was I played soccer growing up a little bit, and then um, Lucas knows me. No, I oh, I know. Oh, i by the way. I've witnessed it firsthand. It's <sighs> yeah, I'm incredible. No, I'm oh, enthusiastic yeah. and bad, but like I. Then I was like, maybe I'll like try football, and I was just so small. And then uh, was like, I really wanted to box. And then I like tried to find a boxing gym, couldn't. Found a jujitsu gym, and then slowly like built up. Just started and stopped like different places until I got to college. And there was like a pure boxing gym, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this. And then I spent all my time doing that. So feels wow. like you were in some kind of covert fight club. Um, no, I was, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty official, except for like the first time I got in there, they were literally like, they're like, oh, like you, it, which is in hindsight, like my coach didn't do this with anybody else. But like when I first got in there, he was like, oh, you can spar William, who's his little brother and was not raised by like human people. Like he basically was like the 17 year old kid and all of his brothers were like, like really decorated fighters. Um, and then his dad was like a nom vet and he's just like. <laughs> And this kid's like 17. And his mom was just a hunk of iron. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> his mom was a wolf, dude. Yeah. And they, he sounds feral. Yeah. yeah. He, now, he's the nicest person, but yeah, he beat the shit out of me for like <laughs> like literally like three rounds. Then my coach was like, if you come back tomorrow, I'll like teach you how to box. And I like did with like two black eyes. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like that's how my dating life is going to be. Yeah. Like, yeah, she's the <laughs> nicest yeah. person, but she beats you the shit out of me. You need to date nicer people. <laughs> well, Sylvie is nice, but I feel like my proclivity is towards people who are going to beat the shit out of me. I was going to say, is this, is this like just, is that if you turn into like a tell all about your ex, if you like. Uh, no, she's wonderful. Okay. She's an incredible person. Yeah. Um, and you just fell. And I just fell. <laughs> it, it was. It was. It was. I, I fell. You fell. Oh was, my it, god! If if she fell so knew. So many times. I'm so clumsy. Thank God she doesn't listen to podcasts. <laughs> I know, yeah. Thank God we don't have a shared interest in that yeah, regard. I, do, I yeah. do that about Danielle. I, I would. I would like to put out a statement that she is a lovely person. <laughs> okay. I haven't met her. But I'm assuming so. Oh no. She she is a, a lovely person who oh, would love. never lay a finger on anyone. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, but. Who's to say in my next relationship I don't want to get beat up a little? State hey, sanctioned. Fingers crossed. State, State sanctioned. sanctioned. Yes. Yeah. State Got a ref there every yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, you, you should come ref the sex. 
Get it. No, no elbows. Everybody get off the cage. Uh, Hayden Arrington, lesbian sex lesbian referee. Lesbian sex referee, dude. That'd be awesome. That's the title right there of the episode. Lesbian, lesbian sex, sex referee. referee. Yes. Welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats Welcome podcast. Welcome to Two Nosy and like Meerkats. Before it starts, like, in boxing, they have to, like, investigate the gloves. So I'm just, like, investigating dildos and, like, vibrators. <laughs> yeah. like, this is, What's this, in this there? This is section. Like, <laughs> is this... sign off on them. Is this regulation toy? <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, yeah, sometimes is in this baseball. Is this a V2? <laughs> yeah. But I'm also getting insulted a little bit. I'm, like, you guys don't. This this thickness is good for you guys. You guys could go with a little thinner. <laughs> you got to be fine with that. <laughs> we like insult you. We're like, no, that's about average. It's about like, a- and you're like, oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you got these anal beads at REI, yeah, yeah. REI, yeah. <laughs> REI anal beads. Yeah, I wish. I wish. Well, I mean, they I don't. Like, want- they would like fold that. You know, like everything in REI is like made to go camping. They yes. like, yeah, fold down into like a little, like like little pouch, basically. The oh thing is, God. I don't use anal beads, but I just wish REI made everything. Yeah, they do have a lot of. They do make a lot. Yeah, they make a lot of stuff. Yeah. Also, every time I'm in an REI, I eat like I the amount of like weird protein things. That yes. I buy that I'm like, why? I'm not gonna eat this, dude. Like, but I'm doing it on the way out. Like, yeah. like the blocks, you know, like the weird yeah, 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 yeah. blocks, the I little like gummy blocks. Those, oh, I can't do those. Yeah, I, they're not good for you. They're no. Like, yeah. Tell you what, I do. I got at last time I was at REI, I got like uh, chocolate chip marshmallows. What? See, that's what I'm saying. Like, and that's they're not healthy at all, but they were delicious. Yeah, but the weirdest thing because they're made for people who are like, we belong to the woods, and you're not. And it's like, no, like regular people who like don't know how to drive should like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not who take left turns on the bridge. You take left, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. That was no cubes, no (laughs) cubes, yeah, yeah. Should we uh, welcome our guest and introduce him? Yes. Um, first, sharp pivot for a second. We just want to acknowledge that someone in the comedy community who we love very much Indeed. has passed away. Rachel Kane, aka Rose Morgan, um, worked with her for a while. One of the first people I met in comedy, and uh, sending love to her boyfriend and her family during this difficult time. Indeed. And now we pivot again. And now to our wonderful guest, who is a fantastic comedian. You know him from hosting a number of shows, one of which I'm doing tomorrow with the wonderful Caleb Clark and Art Kai, previous guests on the podcast who we love as well. Give a round of applause for Hayden Arrington. Hayden (laughs) Cito. Hayden (laughs) Cito. I don't know. I'm broken. You're trying to... Uh, little Hayden you're doing right there? Yeah, sorry. Hayden, Hayden Sote, Cito. big and strong. Oh! oh. Big and strong, dude. I'm trying mm. to bulk up. Yeah. You like, are? Yeah. You're already very bulked up. Thank you, man. That's why yeah. I hang out with this guy. He's like, yeah. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's nice, going to build you up. No, yeah. No, you, you've always had like a very sort of like a very strong build. Like the first time oh. I saw you, I was like, oh, this guy, he knows how to how to do stuff. Yeah, but I'm trying to get wide, dude. You're like, trying to get wide. Like, I, talk, I, I label every one of my workouts as wits. Now mm. it's like just trying to get right. Shosh, Shosh is so tired of hearing about this. She had to walk <laughs> with me from uh, from uh, this thing on Saturday, and that's all I talked about for forty five minutes. I was like, if I could build out like my side delts, dude, like I will literally just be. So, she's like, you're just gonna be in the way, like basically all the time. <laughs> this is like a joke I have about short men. Well, not that you're short. I think you're I about, am short. Are you? How tall are you? I'm like five eight. I that's am, average height. That's not so. short. Yeah, that's what I try to work on this stuff. But like, that's average. That's average height until you're in a bar fight, and then yeah. you literally, and then everyone's like, "We don't want that guy." And yeah. like, mm. and I, I had, a, I have. A, Would I you believe, a, as someone who's taller than five eight, you don't want me in a bar you fight? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not an assist. You know. Um, yeah, well, I know, but everybody could be like, "Whoa, look at." When anytime you have to look up at somebody, like you're basically you're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna lose this fight." Like, you know I promise I mean? you, you can think differently if you're in a fight <laughs> with me. I actually think I could beat both of you up. Right? Yeah, you can. I'm it's, scrappy. You are scrappy. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you have scrappy qualities. You're a very yeah. nice person. You have a very scrappy. I've got a you scrappy do. demeanor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I have this joke I've been working on about how when short men try to bulk up, it's like they're trying to get tall in reverse. Oh, <laughs> really yeah. Funny. And if they're not careful, they're just going to become rectangles. <laughs> See, that's I. Yeah. I do. I want to be built like a like a. Um, uh, like a cheese wheel, kind of like a like a like a trapezoid, basically. Like that's oh. what that would be nice, where it's just like these are slowly because like my legs are there's nothing happening, but like this maybe, you yeah. know. Mm. Well, don't skip leg day. 
Yeah, no, don't I do started it. doing it again recently, and then I uh, and then I I went for a run, and my ass felt like it was falling off. So oh no, like, oh, yeah. just like no. really like like intense and just like painful. In yeah, but in my ass, like in oh. no, like just that. Best just to be the fall ass. off the bone tender. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> have you have you? And tri- that's what that's what they want. Everyone's <laughs> like, dude, we want like here, every every fit fluencer that you're watching is like, listen, your ass should feel like a pot roast that's been sitting in a crock pot for for eight and a half hours. And be like like you know, you can just like shred it with the, like two forks, basically. <laughs> 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 Tenderized, just yeah. tenderized, dude. Tenderized, slow roast. How does your ass feel now? Does it I feel, feel all right. All right, all right, it feels good. good. It hurts a little bit from we played soccer on the. On oh Sunday. yeah, yeah. yeah. Missed out. That was I, I want to come at least watch the soccer games. I like baseball and softball because it's the sport that kind of requires the least amount of running. Oh, and really? soccer, I think, requires the most amount of running. It but I feel like requ- baseball and softball require the most amount of like hand eye coordination. Like I'm terrified of hitting a baseball. Like really, I can't. Oh, I like, love do doing that. Really. Did you did you ever play baseball when you were a kid? I played T ball and then I stopped to uh, until I learned recently. Much like literally, my dad was crestfallen. My dad like all he wanted was for me and my brother to love baseball, and he's like such a good dad that he like never told us that. And oh. it wasn't until like we were like. My brother and I were like twenty something. We're twins, and once we were like twenty one years old, that he, my brother called me. He's like, "Hey, you know, like Dad really wanted us to play baseball." <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Wait, how a- did he find out? Um, I think he just had a conversation with with my oh, mom yeah. about it, basically, because oh. my dad. I don't think my dad would like tell him, but like, yeah, I, I like think about it in hindsight. I'm like, I had a bunch of like little baseball like books and stuff, like like little kids books and stuff about it, and it was oh. just like my dad loved the Braves, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask what his fan. team was. Yeah, so yeah. he was like a Chipper Jones fan. Yeah. Was a that? Chipper Jones fan. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Chipper Jones is a baseball player who um, notoriously left his wife for a Hooters waitress he met yeah. one time. Whoa. Yeah. He was like now. I now see why he was called Chipper. <laughs> <laughs> he was a happy boy. Is that? <laughs> Happy Dude, have you, any thought, like you think you don't get, it, and then you go to a Hooters, and you're like, I would leave everyone in my life for, for these women. Basically, <laughs> it's just tight shirts, and you're like, yeah, you're, yeah. Like, yeah. you're like, this is the one. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting you say that. I went to a Hooters one time um, because I was on the boys' baseball team. Yeah, that's why you boys, were. That's yeah. why you went to Hooters. Well, it's it it was because when we made the playoffs. The, the coach always brought the boys' team to Hooters, and I happened to be on the team that year, and my coach was one of these very, <laughs> like, fa- he he was one of these guys who was like, oh, I'm not going to treat you no different than any of the boys, which I loved. I was obsessed with him. I loved that coach. So he was, like, he would, like, make me carry, equi- like, a ton of equipment and stuff, mm-hmm. and, and he was just very, like, we're fraternizing you. But then he was like, okay, you're coming with us to Hooters. I was like, okay. And I walk into the Hooters, and all of the boys are, like, salivating. And me and the waitresses were, like, kikiing. We're, like, bitch, how was your day? Like, I became straight <laughs> overnight <laughs> at a wait, Hooters. How, how, wait, how old are you at this time? I was, like, 18. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just, like, talking to these women. Like, they're, like, my besties. I don't know what it was. There was something about, like, the waitresses where I just wanted to, like, be their best friends. Best friends? Yeah. I think if, the, if Hooters was a place where instead of, like, in tight shirts walking around giving people wings if women just like look sad and journaled in a corner <laughs> <laughs> i would leave my life for yeah. any of those women the uniform is just having a lot going on if they just if they just if they lost like a couple inches of hair and got a septum piercing you would literally like across the board you'd be like you know what there's something interesting about these women like a little bit of like sad eyes and just like kind of a quiet energy and like that the desperate- restaurant's called ssris <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, went to SSRIs this weekend for the wings. For the wings. <laughs> <laughs> wings aren't that bad. I did the. Uh, oh, first of all, I want to say okay, it's really funny that like there is like a weird thing about coaches being like that's a coach like guy coach thing to be like, listen, you guys won a championship. Now we get to go see some boobs through some shirts, basically. Like, yeah. that's, like, the weirdest thing as it, like, in hindsight. I don't think we're going to do that with our kids. I don't know. I, first of all, I don't think anyone our age plays sports anymore. So, like, <laughs> like, 
I don't know who's going to coach what, but like. Well, so everyone funny. has crazy porn that you can access at your fingertips all the time. That is a thing. Yeah, no, everyone's going to. kind of wrecked the market right. a little bit. It's Yeah, entirely. There was a, there was a Hooters in my hometown that, uh, that closed down. And uh, yeah, everybody, no one cared because it literally was like. Yeah, we found there's internet porn now. Yeah, so it's like it doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you know you know uh, Antoine Nasrallah? Yeah, yeah. He I remember he did a bit recently about what his like New Year's was like, and he was like, uh, <laughs> he was like, I can't afford like a DVD, so I went to the store to get some magazines. That's what I did. I went to <laughs> buy some magazines. <laughs> it was just so. It was just like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? The internet is free. <laughs> that's it, yeah, that's a, I know that's. I, that is it. That is why it was funny. Was that it, it, he is genuinely that old fashioned? He's, though. Yeah, he's, he's like, genuinely that guy. He's, he's like, I like to look at my women and I like them not to move. Like, that's <laughs> I need to fold. Like, yeah. <laughs> I need to fold. I like someone going between. Like, because I don't know. Like, we've never jerked up to to jerked. I use the worst term. Um, to still pictures. So it's like, yeah. are you? Are you halfway through and then you flip through? Are you like, yeah, I'm assuming you're not page turning basically. D no. Well, oh, I'll tell you, I'll t I, my one experience actually holding a, a Playboy magazine was when I went to have a semen analysis uh, at, 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 a, at a doctor's office. Everything was fine. Nice. Everything was fine. Everything yeah. was robust. Everything was. <laughs> we get so thick. Everything was in a. <laughs> we were in a good percentile, friends. We were in a. <laughs> the doctor came up to you and was like, "Yeah, we got it back in. It's juicy. <laughs> <laughs> the viscosity, nice work." <laughs> yeah, it was like best we've ever seen in this office. Yeah. He like became like a jazz singer. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I want. Hey, do you do this more? You should, should do this more. <laughs> That's You're like really good at this. I like the idea that there's one that is like really skeptical because he's like, there's like, because you probably get the weirdest guys at school. Oh, yeah. So, like, a guy's just like coming in and he's like, listen to me. Like, he closes the door and he's like, listen to me. Did you pee in here a little bit? Like, did, you, did, did, you, did you pee in here a little bit? It's too thin, okay? And like, <laughs> I know you're worried about how much you got in there, so then you're like, I'm just gonna fill the rest. <laughs> <of it." laughs> we got a lot of guys that are really concerned with volume. That's yeah, not what yeah, it's, it's about. It's not what it's about. Like, it's like in, in baseball, Sammy Sosa like corked his bat. Like he filled yeah. his bat with um like a lighter with cum? wood. <laughs> yeah, with <laughs> with, with Lucas's gum. That's in <laughs> what if you won a game with a bat full of my. <laughs> Like, it's like concrete. Like I, think I come I know. out on the field. I'm not dressed in a uniform. I'm just like, hey, it's an, it's an honor to be nominated. I think I know the next two nosy meerkats merch exclusive. <laughs> For Wait, Lucas, what? We're gonna what? a bat full of your cum. Oh, okay. we're gonna you trap you in a basement like a sim. <laughs> You're just gonna have to produce. Cum. I'm just like coming dust by the end. Oh God, that's oh, awful. God. Okay. No, but okay. So, so I'm at sorry. the I'm at the facility, and uh, and I've never actually held a Playboy before, so I'm a little bit like, oh, let's see what this is like. So I start like flicking through, and I'm like, all right, this is like really tame. It's like really, it's like yeah, they're like naked and very suggestive, but like it's nothing that crazy. Yeah. And then I realized how creased and crinkled every single page was. And I stopped, and I could not help but think about every single hand that had touched this uh, particular uh. magazine. Especially when you know, when you just think, okay, so most of these guys were like jerking and then alternating and going back That's and forth. What, uh, and yeah. I was like, and so I literally was like, I put it back down and I was like, mm, I couldn't touch it. And so I just, I didn't touch. There was also a DVD and a DVD machine oh, from yeah. like 1999 or something. It was you, like. Have you heard Sarah Edelman's bit about this? She works yeah, at a sperm, she works bank. At a sperm bank. It yeah. wasn't a sperm bank. It was just like, it was oh, a medical but I center. To say, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know she, I didn't know she worked at a sperm bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She has, oh, she has great stand up about Everyone it. It's really good. Everyone has really all good. kinds of jobs, huh? Yeah. People are so, so interesting. Yeah. Aren't they? We you got a job? Yeah. I do have a job. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a. UX designer for uh, for a um, health insurance company. So. Whoa! Mm. You were saying earlier you got fired from a job and then you went to a portrait gallery. Hi. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. I got I got fired from. Uh, 
Well, I, I went the next day. I went on stage right after I got fired. And oh, that's good. And then just bitched about it, and it did really well. But then, the no, you know, it's like whenever it's just the in the moment thing, and it's like there's no, there's nothing that comes out of it. Basically, like there's no yeah. like real. Yeah, I think there's a way to like uh, work on a bit in a way that you could sustain it. As yeah. like as like what it was like to experience getting fired and like with that context you could totally do it. Uh, Kevin Warren's done that recently. Very he has a new bit of great minds think alike. Yeah. Oh, did exactly. he just get fired? He just got fired. Yeah. Oh. Like, uh, yeah. King shit. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I got put on HR suspension for uh, talking shit about my coworkers on GChat, I also went on stage that night. Nice. Yeah, and yeah. it was really it was really. And you read cathartic. the chat. I did not. I did not read the chat, oh. but it is interesting the way like I, I've liked, especially in the midst of like what's going on with me, like talking to comics about. I feel like all of us are just like, yeah, of course we'd go on stage during like the worst moments of, of our lives. Life. Yeah, yeah. But I, like, yeah. I talk to my parents, and they're like in disbelief that I'm going on stage right now, and I'm not just eating takeout. <laughs> In right. House. Were, were yeah. they like really impressed? They're like, oh my God, you're so brave for doing that. I could never do that after oh, getting fired. Not like brave, but they're like, wow, Insane. like clear. Yeah. They're, <laughs> yeah like, they're, like, they're like, this is not the way to handle this. Up the dosage, Gabby. Up the dosage. <laughs> Some people are like, you should process your feelings. I'm like, no. You're like, <laughs> I'm yeah. doing it, right? Yeah, yeah in front of everyone. I'm processing we it in front process. of everyone. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're processing it for me. What's the yeah. time that you've gone on stage that was like the worst personal time in your life to go on stage? That's a good question. Oh my god, I did. Um, uh, my uh, my great aunt died, and probably like my really, she was kind of like a like a grandmother to me. And uh, I went to the funeral that day, and then I came home, and then I did Friend Island, and ripped, dude. I fucking ripped. I believe dude. you. Whoa, <laughs> that's so, right. Did you do material about it, or no, what, I it did was not. just like I, my yeah. mom knew I was also leaving to go to the show, and she was like, "Don't you tell anyone that you're leaving and going to do a comedy show after this." So, <laughs> oh my god, my cousin's listening. I really hope she's not. But that's, <laughs> yeah. is, is is your mom a, a bit of a guilt tripper? Does she? Uh, my mom's actually not. Um, my my brother is for sure, basically. Really? Really? There's always like any time that I'm not going somewhere. Like I have shows at the end of the month, and my brother's like, "You're not going fishing with us," and like, oh, like me and Dad, he's like, "This means a lot to Dad." And I'm like, "Yeah, but we're doing it next month, and we're doing it the month after." And like, I'm yeah. literally, yeah. I leave this city once a month to like go somewhere in the middle of the ocean, basically to like go fish with my dad and my brother, basically. <laughs> That's really wholesome. That's so sweet. Thanks. No, it's nice. They scream at each other the whole time, and I'm like, I'm having a good really? time, and I no mean, one you else. You can't would... catch fish screaming at each other. The fish yeah, we need don't. to feel that's, relaxed. That's, yeah, my brother's never once relaxed in his entire life. Basically, <laughs> oh yeah. is your is your uh, dad and your brother really similar in a way that they it, you maybe feel a little bit different? Is that yes? Wow, look at this. You guys are fucking good at this. This I, is interesting. Uh, yeah, my so my dad is uh, my dad owned a. Um, for, he's, it's a, he was a grading contractor, but it's like it's the easy way to say it's like he set the foundations for for buildings, basically, like for commercial buildings. For uh, he was a farmer before that, and then and he won a lot of awards as a farmer, which I know is a thing. <laughs> but like, there's like a, a wall in our home that's just like dedicated from like the Soybean Association that like my dad won these awards. <laughs> <laughs> so Incredible. weird. And, Best uh, bean. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's a, Bean man, dude. They uh, it's an honor to be nominated, <laughs> and it's one specific bean, dude. It's like literally, they're like, This bean is the most symmetrical bean, but they uh, they uh, they preserved it in epoxy. They were like, <laughs> that's what that's actually the a pretty about. good idea for a trophy, but, and, then, and yeah. that's your award, then, yeah. yeah. Or they make like you know, they always have like uh, like if you like in soccer, it's always like somebody kicking the ball or something like that. So it's yeah. like somebody tilling a field, but that person's made out of soybeans, basically. And then I like that idea, anyway. I like that. They, yeah. Uh, yeah, he became a grading contractor after that. And so, like, he has, like, an engineering mind. And my brother's an engineer, basically. Mm. And I am bad at all. I cannot assemble IKEA furniture alone, basically. Wow. So, yeah. That's so fat. I It's it's always so interesting to hear how twins are different. Yeah. It's, we're very different. You're very, was yeah. it, it was always like that your entire life? Or did you have, like, a point where you were, like, maybe very similar? Like, when you um, were young? I think I our sense of humor is somewhat similar. I think I have a little bit wider sense of humor than, than my brother does, but uh, 
and we have like relatively similar taste in music i will say because mm. he like anything he'll like ask me to make him playlists and stuff basically that's very sweet nice. he's very nice he's a very nice person but yeah we're very very different i always like kind of take jabs at him being like just like he at 18 was like what if i just became like super republican <laughs> like, uh, he was, like there you go i knew like, i liked crazy. him yeah, i knew i, I liked him. him should i start too <laughs> we should it's never too late and yeah that's what, it's never and, and now that i say it you can always take time to find yourself this you is can. the time yeah. that mitch mcconnell seems like a nice guy he does yeah, he yeah. does yeah nice little <laughs> vessel oh no oh. The clock just fell off as I said that. Yeah. Is Mitch McConnell in the room with us right <laughs> now? He does have mystical power. Remember that whole thing about his hands? Yes. Yes, they were. They They're were not real hands. Like They were like black and yeah. sort of like weird. Yeah. he does. I don't know if you guys have been playing the new Zelda, but he like he looks like he's got like the arm that you get in Zelda. I don't know mm. if you guys I, I, I'm still on Breath of the Wild after your suggestion. Dude. You were the one who recommended I yeah. start and now I'm deep in the game. Dude. That's yeah. a great. That's a great. Game. It's so fun. But yeah, I haven't started Tears of the Kingdom yet. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna get there, dude. You know yeah, what I? Fun. What I'm on is. Um, I got an old timey GameCube like, oh, yeah. that I used Beautiful. to play like as a child, and now I'm playing Twilight Princess. Whoa! Really old. I don't know really this game. old. Yeah. Yeah, it's like one of the first Zelda. Zelda's yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is that there's what's the other the because my one of my coworkers is playing. Wind Taker, I think, which is, uh, I think, one app or a couple yeah. apps, mm-hmm. basically. That's crazy, though. Mm-hmm. It's The graphics are okay for the time, but what I like about it is just that, like, he's just this, like, little twink running around on yeah. a mission, you know? And yeah. I and I love that about him. It's, yeah. th- that's the great thing about, I think the, the weird thing about the progression is, like, it's like, oh, we went from this cute kid to, like, this, like, small man, which yeah. is what he is now, who, yeah. like... Can can beat the shit out of anybody. But the weird thing, I don't know if you got this from Breath of the Wild, but like yeah. they've changed it for Tears of the Kingdom. But in Breath of the Wild, it's like every woman he talks to, he has like weird sexual tension with. <laughs> like yes. Every every and it's like it can be a fish person, it can be a bird person. And it's like each one of them like I like the fact that he's diverse as far as it goes but like everyone <laughs> he's literally three feet shorter than every like every woman he talks to do you relate to that short king inspiration <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no i dated a girl briefly who was taller than me and i think it didn't work out because she was tall and i it really like bothered really? me oh did it did it bother her do you no. think no and in hindsight like i i think it just wasn't mature enough at the time you know mm, so. that that happened would you date a tall queen now yeah, uh, I, I probably would, uh, but I mean, I'm in a uh, in a relationship. And oh yes, yes yeah. of course you are. Yeah. How long have you been with your girlfriend? For f- going on four years. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Y'all are cute together. I just remembered I have met her. Yeah. Thanks. I met her yeah. as well. She was awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good run. Probably coming to an end, you know. Yeah, but we'll, 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 <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get you a tall yeah, queen after this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How t- wait? How tall was the uh, taller person? Oh, she's uh, probably like an inch or two taller than me. But it's the oh, thing okay. is like in I think it's like a, a normal thing. But like for some reason, like in the South, like in South Carolina or at the school, like people like couldn't even see it, and we didn't like we were never like together together. But like, you know, like we would come to part like situationship thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And in Damn. the South people would People what, would like, be like, well, you guys aren't together. Like, so, like, nobody would ask or anything like that, but, like, literally, like, somebody would, like, hit on her in front of, like, ba- like basically. And uh, I'd be yeah, like, but oh, like, it's you, Hayden. Of course I'm going to. Yeah, course. exactly. That's yeah. sad. You That's should awful. be You should be, so, like, yeah, linked they didn't and just know. beat him up. Yeah, no, I was teaching someone else how to do jujitsu in the corner because that's what I do when I drink. And it's <laughs> like, everyone's like, Hayden's teaching people how to wrestle. And it's <laughs> Daniel, my girlfriend, that hates that. She was like, yeah. We uh, we do you still do that when you're? I would like to say no, um, but but in uh, my birthday, I I was really good about it. It's like it's like breaking a sober shirt, you know. It's like it's like I had like I'm getting chips and stuff, you know what I mean? Like you're getting like, but like it'd been years, and then literally like I got really drunk on my birthday, and it was like a day drinking thing. And then uh, have you have you guys met Noah Miller? He's like a really good friend of mine. He's a comic here, but I don't think I have. He was a DC guy. Um, who oh wait, up is, here. is he still in DC? No, 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 no. That's Noah Goldstein. That's Noah yeah, Goldstein. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all my good friends are named Noah. Really weird. Um, yeah. 
but uh, shout out to Noah. You're a Jew collector. Shout out to, yeah, yeah you. <laughs> this guy's not Jewish. Uh, oh, interesting. And he's like weirdly proud of that. You know, he's like really, he's like very <laughs> adamant about how not Jewish. <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep thinking of stuff that I can't say. I was about to say, no, gotta say catch it. them all. And I was like, you <laughs> can't. Gotta catch what them all. What the fuck? Someone <laughs> tried that. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. They tr- Hillary was just playing yeah, a big cool old guy. game of Real Pokemon. Yeah, cool guy. Real game of Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we gotta stop. Ball's not gonna get Trains. We could put, all right. They, um... Noah, so use callback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like we wrestle each other constantly, mm. and as as two heterosexual men do. Yeah. And his wife was there, and my girlfriend was there, and I don't think e- either of us realized how carried away we were getting. But we were slamming into things into my apartment, and it was like a fifteen minute long thing of like. Like his wife and my girlfriend just like sipping beers and like watching us being like, and you stop and you stop now and stop and <laughs> stop now. And basically like it just went on and we we're like, all right, good. And then they left. And then I like <laughs> literally like sat down and like my apartment is a mess. And my girlfriend was like, are you not going to acknowledge how fucking weird that was? And I was like, what was that? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, that was so weird. I was like, that's just like how guys hang out. And she's like, you're almost 30. Like, she's yeah. like, like, stop. Like, Does that not make you think, damn, she really loves me? Yeah, no, I think about it. I was like, was it that weird? And she was like, it was, and then I got like, you get like anxiety. And I was like, dude, I was like, that was so weird. She got fucking, and then I like texted him. And I was like, I'm really sorry, man. That was really weird. He was like, what are you talking about, dude? That was like the best time of my life. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, it's only weird because you lost, dude. Like, that's why oh, I like, and then you got I owned you, dude. Then you got to oh, run over God. and fight him again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, do you think it would have gone differently if you had won? Your girlfriend was like, "That was pretty cool that you won." No, <laughs> she, that's the thing. Is like, I think if there's like that stupid. You talk about like alpha break. That's a stupid thing in my head where I'm like, dude, if there's like a situation, you know, and I like beat the hell out of somebody, like she'd be like, whoa. It's like Jason Bourne. It's like, no, mm-hmm. she'll literally be like, what? I'm literally leaving you. You That's yeah. the most violent thing I've ever witnessed someone do to another person over probably a game of darts in a bar. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. it's never serious, basically. And she's like, yeah, don't do, like, yeah, I have no idea. She's still around, and I don't know why. But she's, yeah, she likes me for a lot of reasons. I just I wish that her and Noah's wife had fought each other while That's what yes. we said. Yeah. We're like, in hindsight, like, why were you, you guys should, like, break out a game of Scrabble or something. Like, you guys should do some, it, it's not yeah. It's not weird that we wrestled each other. It's weird that you watched for that long. That's, that's yeah. what's weird about it. It's weird you didn't start, like, you know, throwing out, like, jabs at each other. Yeah, fucking exactly. just like Somebody just doing hit something. somebody, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Kill but each other. <laughs> <laughs> Throw some knives in the mix. One knife. Everyone goes for that knife. <laughs> Bring a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> um, in your stand-up, you talk about going on a trip with your girlfriend and her friends. Yeah. What oh, was that yes. like? In Cuba, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was... Um, I don't think I've heard this bit. I remember you saying that you were about to go, and then when you came back, that it was like kind of a no. Go into it. Yeah. Oh no no it was yeah no I think we talked about it. A yeah little yeah, bit. yeah a little bit. Well when I came back I immediately got a strep throat which sucked but um but no it was just like Cuba's a really cool place. It's a really hard place to to go because like um the uh, agreed upon like exchange rate for like. First of all, they want to take U.S. dollars. They want to take euros. So you shouldn't actually exchange your money when you go there, at least not right now, because, like, the Cuban peso is, like, dropped, and, like, the government agrees it's one, like, here's the exchange rate, but then the Cuban people agree it's a different one. So it's, like, a nightmare to get around, basically. And I exchanged all of my money when I first oh, got no. there. So it was just, like, and then I got along with everybody, but it was very much just, like, I'm with her friends, basically. And... Mm. Um, that's what the, the bit is just like, we went out so often and like, I hate dancing. Like I fucking hate it. And like, it was just one of those things where it's like, it's fine for like one night, but I was like, dude, we, this is terrible right now, yeah. basically. Aww. And, uh, yeah, I, th- it's, that's a lot of what it is. But the whole reason we went like, was that they're all licensed in scuba diving and I'm not, and I have always wanted to be, but I haven't like gotten the chance to do it. So I think I'm going to do a certification this summer, but they're like, oh, we should go somewhere where Hayden doesn't have to be licensed to scuba dive, which is like the number one thing their scuba instructor was like, don't do that. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, Breaking some rules. Yeah, they, the, it, the, the, the problem here is not that Hayden doesn't know. It's all these regulations all these getting regulations. in the yeah, way. Come on. Well, that's the thing. is, And that's what the bit is about. I was like, uh, 
before we went, I was like, is there anything that I like need to know? My girlfriend's like, no, it's mostly common sense. And I was like, it's mostly breathing underwater. Like it literally is like, and like common sense. <laughs> this, yeah. they, they, you know, like regular, like <laughs> regular. Yeah. And like, what you also, also forget is like sanitation, not like they're throwing, like I was, my feet were like on top of like the scuba things that were going to go in your mouth. You know what I mean? Like I'm squashing grapes, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like on the little car but ride it's your on the life way there. Line. But it's literally, yeah. And I'm like, that's not sanitary. And they're like, and my, my girlfriend looks at me and she's like, that is literally the last thing you need to worry about. Like it being sanitary. You need to worry about not dying. And I was like, why am I doing this right now? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go that bad. Like, you know? And uh, I like wrestling with my friends. With my this friends. This is insane. Yeah, yeah. No, it was like, it was crazy because like, while well, I was talking to John Moskowitz late yeah. after we came back and he was like, my parents are old enough where they both had friends that have died from skydiving and from scuba diving. And I was like, is that that common? And, and I talked to my girlfriend. She was like, yeah, people die from scuba diving like a decent amount. Like enough where it's like it's it shouldn't be like a common, you know, like, oh, we'll go diving. Type See, thing. I like snorkeling. Snorkeling, so I, scuba diving. I will say, after I did, I was like, "This is super, super fun." Like, oh, awesome. I've actually always wanted to do it as well. Mm, where are you getting? Where are you getting your certification? Oh, I apparently there are places in New York that like take you out. Should we go so together? We should do it, dude. Ooh. I need a, yeah. Should we get exciting. Exciting. I was all oh, I, I love. It. Well, I love swimming first of all. So scuba diving would only be better. I would nice. love it. I would love to. I like the yeah. I like the idea that we're like this is how dangerous it is and we all could die. And then we're like, should we all go do this and like get certified? Well, if we get certified, then we're fine. Then we're, well, then that's we're... the other thing is like there's stuff that they thought was common sense that I didn't know was common sense. Oh yeah, and that's what the bit was like. Um, they you're not supposed to swim with your arms, and the guy told me that you're not supposed to swim with your arms by just like first of all he didn't speak English, and the guy that did speak English who was at like the dive shop used his English just to make fun of the other guy. He was like, he was like, he was like, here, here's the deal. He's like, let's do this briefing. And then he was like, I'm not going to take you out. This guy's going to take you out. And then he was like, look how fucking fat he is. And, was like, <laughs> and we were like, what? And he's like, isn't it? Look, look how fat he is. He's going to float so well. Right. And I, was like, I was like, can you teach me how to scuba dive? Like, and like, so then they, t this guy takes us out and he's doesn't know how to tell me don't swim with your arms. So he just keeps doing this. <laughs> and shaking his head underwater. And I was like, I thought, I thought he was disappointed in me. <laughs> and I was like, that makes sense. Because I literally, like, was swatting people's, like, mouth. Like, th like their respirator out of their mouths. And, like, their goggles off their head and stuff. I attacked everyone underwater. Like, I attacked everybody. <laughs> and it's not like, if and when you're, here's something I learned. When your respirator comes out, you can't just put it back in. What you have to do is, like, when it comes out, you have to not panic. And you have to blow a small stream of bubbles, basically. Because if you were to just, like, be like, and then, like, blow all your air out and then put it back in, like, your lungs could, like, explode, basically. And so they had, my girlfriend and her friends had to do, like, these emergency <laughs> drills underwater, like, like, 40 feet under, like, doing these drills and stuff. And I had no idea what the hell was happening. I would personally oh come out of the water. Yeah. If that happened to me. Well... In the first three feet of water, that's when I I literally looked like I was I was like I'm drowning basically. I was like, yeah. and everyone was oh like, you're fine. I was like, no, I'm drowning like right now. Like this is the heaviest thing that's ever been on my body, and I'm going downward. And Did that's you, a weird, unnatural thing. Yeah. Did you stay in the water, or you're like, no, I'm tapping out. This is you guys from now. I on. I never thought about quitting it because I really really want to learn how to scuba dive because yeah. I really have always wanted to do it, and I've been very close to like getting like a temporary certification. But every time we would had to leave, but I always I was just like, and I knew like like. Can't Cancun or whatever it was like we'd always be leaving like the next day basically so I was like oh I'll 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 do it so yeah we should all go get certified but afterwards we got out and this is this the only English this guy is he looked at me and he was like he was like he was like you're a natural and I was like dude no I'm not and he was like I was like I just like freaked out underwater and he was like yeah but like you didn't like I was, I was like, I attacked all my friends underwater. And he was like, yeah, but, like, you didn't panic. And I was like, of course I didn't panic, dude. I was the danger, basically. Like, I, was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm the problem all the time. Like, I do wonder where in New York they certify you. Like, are we going to go in the Hudson or alternatively the Tompkins Square pool? No, we're going to go to the Y. You want to go to the Y? <laughs> well, they do. Um, usually the, these places, they get like an older rock quarry and then they fill it up with water, basically. Oh. And then they put like different species of like freshwater fish in them. Which is <laughs> or the, cool. Those fish must be so confused. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they must be freaking out. 
<laughs> we're all our friends. Who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. And there's why so, is he punching us? And there's like so so many, yeah, yeah, so many like <laughs> big freshwater fish too. Yeah. I don't know. I, we didn't see any sharks, and that's I think that's because they were scared of me. So, cause <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you're, yeah. you're a scary guy. <laughs> yeah. You're flailing You're the around. apex predator I, in, the, yeah. in that body of water. Do you like aquariums? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I do like aquariums. Yeah, yeah. I well, also like aquariums. You said that you uh, got high and went to the portrait gallery. Have you ever gotten high and gone to the aquarium? No, I think I would freak the fuck out. Really? I, think I really would. Oh, I love being high at the aquarium. Oh no, no, no! Top it's five so places calm. to be high. It's so calm. Re- I don't like really smoke anymore. I used to smoke almost every day, and uh, and I don't anymore because when Daniel and I got together, originally. She had some like residual trauma because she when we got the funny thing about DC is that like weed's legal there and everyone has government jobs so, like no one can just be honest about them smoking weed which is hilarious yeah and uh, she's like the most honest person I know like in my life so they were like have you smoked weed and she was like yes and then they didn't give her a job and she like had to go get like a waitressing job so like it had like a lot of traumatic effect on her which makes sense and so she um, has been like has just like not really smoked in a while. So whenever we first got together, um, I, she came over one time and I was really high and I'm from North Carolina. So I literally was like the idea of like Uber Eats was new to me. And I was just like, so I could just get like any cuisine from anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) And she was like, I'm going to go home. And I was like, what if I want like Ethiopian food? She was like, you can order that. Like, it's like, she's like, she's from LA. She's like, this is not. And then, (laughs) The second time she came over, this is a real reason I stopped. Is the second time she came over, we had been dating for a while, and we just slept together. And I was like, I looked over at her, and I was like, I want to say that I love you, but I was like, it's too early. But I was halfway through it, so I was like, ah. And then she like looked over at me, and I was like, I really care about you. That's what I said. Aww. And she was like, "What the fuck?" And like, and uh, and then and then we both laughed about that. And then I was like, "I'm not gonna smoke around this person again." And now we live together. So it's <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> that's a good point. So you haven't smoked in years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have not. No. Yeah. Shame. No. Shame. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. Damn, damn shame. Really good uh, hangover cure is uh, sweet. It helps with the nausea a ton. I think, Ooh. So. Yeah. Interesting. Um, something else I wanted to ask you about just as a little pivot here. Mm -hmm. Another bit that you do that I love is about when you went to elementary school with that horse girl. Yeah. Gabby Uh, Schmidt, dude. Gabby Schmidt. Horse girl's name Gabby. Horse girl's name. Were you, were you a horse girl? No, but I'm obsessed with the- a horse girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm currently, I never gave up. (laughs) I'm obsessed with the idea of horse girls. I love- (laughs) The I I love it because I think that every horse girl wants to fuck the horse. <laughs> Probably, right? Yeah. I uh, no question. I think they all think the horses are like so fit, muscly, majestic, and they're just like <laughs> yeah. horny for the strong horse. and silent. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're like so obsessed with how giant these animals are, like rippling muscles. Like I really believe. Okay, they all... someone wants to fuck a horse. So, yeah. Maybe I want to fuck a horse. No, I don't. I don't, Peta. If you're watching, is that the horse's name? <laughs> Peta. But do you like? Don't you like? Kind of get it. Like, whenever you're around the horse. Yes. Like, first time I saw, like, the horses, like, try to get, you know how they, like, a, a fly will land on a horse and they'll, like, move their skin? Yes. Like, oh, and like, just, little, like, shake it off just like, with this. Whoa. You're like, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Crazy, dude. Yeah. Or being able to just, like, move your ear, like, like yeah. I, I wish I could do that. You wish, is that what, yeah. what, what do you want from a horse? What, 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 what just what their friendship. Would you want from a horse? <laughs> I want them to be happy. You want yeah. them to be happy? I, want, I, want I like them. if you could have a physical quality from a horse, what would you have in your life? <laughs> I just want them to have a nice time. I mean, that's the thing about horses, right? Is like, they're so used for our human purposes, but I just like want to know what they're like without us. Yeah. That's true. I think they just run around a lot. You yeah. Know, like they, yeah. I think th- I think they're just, they're chilling. They, they like to eat some grass and chill with their friends and not have... Get not get shot if they break their leg. That's what they like. Horses just like me for real. <laughs> <laughs> well, they. I think everything I've ever learned about uh, horses, I learned from the movie Spirit, which was a animated oh, stallion design. of the Cimarron. And you know what? My yeah. mom got the Spirit soundtrack because here's the thing: no one realizes that Phil Collins made the Tarzan soundtrack, but he also made the Spirit soundtrack. I didn't and, know about this. And yeah, and I did not 
like that didn't register with me as a child. I legitimately was like, I think my mom is sexually attracted to the the horse from Spirit, and like I legitimately like it 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 worried me. And then as an adult, I was like, no, I think my mom just wants to fuck Phil Collins, but also <laughs> like I think I also want to fuck Phil Collins. Yeah. Like it's he's a very I don't know. Oh my god, I was at a I was at a wedding this past weekend, and um the groom danced with his mom to like the one of the songs from Tarzan and I wept. Oh yeah, dude. I absolutely wept. Dude, there's Oh my god. I think I would have cried. I think I I never th- I I hate that this is the person that I am, but like at weddings I will like get choked up a little bit on stuff and like I can and I hope my girlfriend is listening cuz she is not that person at all. Really? And, you know, it's like you know what's sadder than like uh like like a like a a dude crying? It's like a dude crying when his wife is fine. You know like it's like <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, and no, my brother was like, he danced with my mom, you know, at their wedding, and I fully probably would have cried, but he picked a country song, and I was like, that oh, is like, yeah. oh, so you were able to have an anchor in reality, like, no, 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 I'm not crying. Like, at no, this. no, 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 this is stupid. Like, oh, okay. like I'm gonna be honest, yeah. I still would have cried at a yeah. country song. Yeah, well, I that's think good. I would be like, oh, they love this. You know, yeah. I don't have to love it, but yeah. they they love it. They love this embarrassing. I mean, also That's there true. there is some country music that like I don't personally resonate with country music as a city girl myself. Right. But um I got into an ironic Toby Keith phase one time. Dude, oh my god. No, Toby Keith. Oh, I love Toby Keith. No, I get it. Do you do you know the song As I Once Was? Oh yeah. Oh my dude, god. That came out when I was in third grade and I was ripping it, dude. And I looked way more Asian than I do now. And that was confusing <laughs> for a lot of people. Like Wait, 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 wait. Confusing how what do people say? Just, they like, just were literally like I think my dad at some point was like, You probably shouldn't do it, you know, we can find something pop music or something. Listen to you know, like it wasn't like it wasn't like you're like causing a, a stir. Yeah, it's because I probably would do the Toby Keith voice singing. Like, <laughs> well, can, you give, can you give us a little? A good, can you give us a little burst? No, I don't think. No, I can't do it now. I man. think you can. No, I, can. Yeah. I ain't as good as, as I once was, but I'm as good once. It's as about it's about yeah. um Toby Keith like having threesomes and getting in bar fights, but he's like an old man and he's telling people like. You know, I I'm a little past my prime, but like one time I can do it, and I, I can, can do really, it. yeah. The song should actually be called "I'm Not as Big of a Problem as I Once Was." <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like, that's where you got it from. That's what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. No, I was like, this is who I look up to. This is yeah. guy who's wearing a cowboy hat and just Indeed. literally like, yeah, slinging him around. But I no, I never liked that type of country music. I liked. Uh, I don't know, like I, I like more like Western type stuff, I guess. I, I'm not, I'm not I'm Wait, new to country. Could music. you distill the difference between country and Western and what those I am not because there's like there's like a whole thing where it's like country, western Americana is like apparently its own thing. Yeah. And I'm not really sure. I don't know. I'm like super basic in all of it, but I do like Tyler Childers if you guys like Tyler Childers. if you guys I don't, I don't know Tyler who this Childers. is. Dude, so good. Um Kentucky slash West Virginia guy. Is but, Morgan okay. Wallen country? Yes, he is country, but he's more of that, like, s- I guess, like, kind of stadium country a little bit. Yeah. Really kind of sure. what country? Stadium. They call it, like, stadium country, basically, those, like. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have, like, weird, I have, like, <coughs> bless you. Thank is, you. is Garth Brooks, like, stadium country? Very stadium country. Yes. Yeah, basically. Garth Brooks has some bangers. Yeah, he's he does have some. He's like one of the highest grossing artists. He is like, the highest grossing artist in the states. That's bigger crazy. than Beyonce. That's crazy. It's yeah. He is. He sells more tickets. Does every every stat is greater than Beyonce? I mean, we are coastal elites. I'm a like, little. We don't know. You know, how. I don't know about you guys, but I'm actually like that's like relieving because I thought there was going to be a woman on top or one. No, no, no. The world still makes sense. The world like, still works. I was like, what? Okay. Thank God. Wait, it's a guy that looks like my dad. I was like, Oh, <laughs> thank God. Thank God. Oh my God. Have uh, you seen his social media? Wait, have you, have you followed, you know, Segura? You yes. Follow, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, dude. I, and, I'm obsessed with that. Like, yeah. Not even that I'm like that big of like a Your Ramas fan, but I just think it's really funny that like it, it is but the thing is he is actually that weird on no. social media. He said he like he and his wife, Trisha Yearwood, they they made like a post for like 
supporting refugees from Ukraine. And he like laughs at really weird moments when they're doing a very somber video. Like he's like, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're sending all our, our love out to the Ukraine, especially the refugees. <laughs> and he's like growling at the camera. And then she's like, uh, donate all you can. And he's like, ah, stand up for Ukraine. It's, like, it's so <laughs> weird. It, I can, I, I can show you that. It's so weird. That's insane. It's so weird. There's, yeah. I feel like there's like, that kind of celebrity, though. Once yeah. You get there, you yeah. Know, there is there is a point where you get so big that you can't not get weird. Yeah. So when you get there, Lucas. Yeah. When yeah. You, you let get us there. fucking. I mean, Gabby and I will still be. I'll take over running the podcast. But like you, when you get there, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. gonna just slot Hayden in and call him Lucas the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. You get a you get a little curly wig. <laughs> That's I do. I have a Bob Ross wig. So do you actually? I do. I went as oh. Bob Ross for Halloween one time uh, because me and my roommate got in a big fight because we were supposed to do a couple's costume. And uh, yeah, because Daniel and her roommate thought it would be really funny if they did. And I was like, this is going to be a nightmare trying to do this with my roommate. And I was right because he was like, what if we just do separate things? And I was like, it's not a couple's costume, Jack. Like literally like, <laughs> yeah, you got to do stuff together, man. Did Jack go as a happy little tree? No, he went as Jay Leno, which is also funny. <laughs> <laughs> That is kind of funny. <laughs> it is very funny. <laughs> that is so funny. What another thing I wanted to ask you about because one of my favorite bits, which I think I may have mentioned before, is what it's when We're just you going through your disguise. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. It's, it's when you uh, talk about what it was like being like as a child in school with ADHD and how like your school and, pe- and teachers didn't know how to handle or like oh yeah or how to like process it, saying like oh he sees things the rest of us can't. That is yeah. like one <laughs> he sees things the rest of us can't see is one of my favorite punchlines oh, ever. Oh thank you. It's so good. Because it's, I can empathize with the person who says that, trying right. to just like say it kind of respectfully or like in a in a bit of awe, even. Yeah. Of like what you are like, and like. Yeah, he's. I yeah, I was. I was like, he sees things we don't see. That's literally like how they would say it, and they it's really. Just, it's literally like because I would just drift off in the middle of a class, and then other kids would be like, "What the fuck's he doing?" And then like the teacher would be like, "He sees things we don't see." Basically, <laughs> and I'd be like, like, "I'm not. I'm not doing that." You know, yeah. like. Your profit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically, and stuff. I just drew weird cartoons, and that's yeah. all I did. Basically, I'm wondering if they like treated you as like some sort of like mystic who could tell like what who was good, which team was gonna win. Which team <laughs> like, was gonna? Yeah, yeah. He sees through the matrix. Or you like, should have harnessed that power. Yeah, been yeah. like, oh, the Mavericks are gonna win tonight. That's true. I should. Yeah, I used it for no good. I think. I. What uh, did you do? I don't know. I was always. I got in trouble a lot as a kid. I. T- I. T- <laughs> I was telling Kevin about this. I had a. Um, I would do, like, weird pranks. Like, I don't know if they're pranks or not. But I, like, I snuck into... I think I told you about this. I snuck into... You know, remember, like, when everyone had com- computer labs? Mm. So I snuck into the computer lab one day because it wasn't locked. And I changed the background of everyone's computer in the lab to Bill Clinton um, when I was in eighth grade. But it was, it was like, Bill Clinton pointing at Bill Clinton. So half the Bill Clintons were like this <laughs> and the other half the Bill Clintons were like this. And then in, on one computer screen, it was just 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. That was really funny. And uh, <laughs> some, te- mosaic. Some, teacher, some teacher caught me doing that. And she was like walked in there, and I swear to God, she like was fully like you know like they like to turn on like teacher mode. Yeah, she, like, turn on. She was like fully ready to yell at me, and then she saw she was like ah, and then she like saw all. And she was like I don't even know if I should get mad about this basically. <laughs> and I was like you gotta let me. Fit. I have two computers left basically. And she was like <laughs> and she was like she was like what is your plan? And I was like she was like you know you're gonna get caught like there's cameras in here. I was like yeah every computer is logged in as me. Like it's like very <laughs> like. Like, cause you can't change someone's background if it's not, you know what I mean? Like you can't just change the background if it's not logged in as you. Like we all had. You're like, I'll turn myself in. This is yeah, how I, like, I they just think it's really funny. <laughs> I like to believe there's one dumb kid who walked into the computer lab and was like, really? Him? Yeah, yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I don't know if it was a statement or like anything, but I also like the principal was my, uh, a good friend of mine's mom. And she was like, yeah. You just come here so often. Like, you should just go back. Like, just, like, 
<laughs> they our our eighth grade English teacher had no idea how to deal with like our entire class one time and we were all being rambled. She sent all of us to the to the principal's office. <laughs> the entire <Aww>. class. <laughs> <laughs> we did so And then funny. we were all lined up out there and the principal was giving a tour of the school, basically. And like she stopped, saw all of us and was like, What's the deal? And we're like, Miss Dodic sent us all here and she goes, Go back to class. She was like, Just go back <laughs> Just to class. Just go back. Oh my god. Yeah. Was that the first time your principal was like, Oh my god, I haven't taught a class in a long time? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've the, been in this office for so for long. So sure, yeah. The principal rediscovers a new passion and becomes like yeah. the school of rock the teacher. School of rock <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be oh, awesome. Like, that movie rules. I, that, the best. that did remind me of like the w- craziest thing a teacher ever did was that um, I was in rehearsal for a musical when I was in high school and like Gang. the rest of yes. <laughs> and the rest of the cast was like in the audience of the auditorium just like waiting to get used and they were talking they were chatting as as you would and i was on stage with a few other people getting directed and he got our director got so mad at everyone else because they wouldn't stop talking and he said if i can't treat you like humans i'm going to treat you like animals lie down on the ground and he made everyone get out of their seats and lie belly down on the floor of the auditorium Oh my god! And it's a like lot succession. of parents got mad. Yeah, Poor no, that makes on the sense. floor. Poor yeah. on the floor. That's so insane. He then ran for city council. <laughs> what, what, what for real? And he asked me if I would advertise for him. I was like, no, no, that's crazy. Yeah. How long were you guys on the floor for? Uh, I wasn't on the floor. I was. Oh, on, you were. I was standing. on stage getting directed. How I was long like were you standing I, while they were on the floor for. It was uh, maybe ten minutes. That's so long. Yeah. For, like, for no one to like come by and like that's yeah. the, that's the most insane like. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's too long. He was yeah. he was not a good he was not a good teacher. Yeah, in hindsight, do you have like teachers that you're like that's not like you were barely a person and then mm. you were in charge of other you were in charge of students. Oh like, my god. Um it's- most of the teachers at LaGuardia High School were like that. There was one, I think I might have told this story on the podcast before, but we used to I'll name him. Uh we used to have this um like director of the drama department. His name was Brad Vincent. And he came in and he's the teacher I do that joke about, about how like sometimes sex ed can be too progressive. Oh yeah. This because he said, he said something like, um, never swallow a man's semen, even if he says he loves you. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why is that so specific? That's it feels crazy. like it happened to you. <laughs> And then Oh, it for sure happened. There's no way that didn't happen to him. Yeah, he was very openly gay. He brought in like a much younger boyfriend one time to like watch the class. He was like, this is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is just sitting in the corner watching our class. The <laughs> next week, Jesus is not there anymore. Brad Vincent has grown out this like breakup beard and he's saying stuff like, you never want to do method acting because some feelings are too powerful. Oh my to god! Be felt. He's like going through his breakup in front of these teenagers. Oh my god. It the apex of him was um, becoming Kevin Mulheron, <laughs> <laughs> and that man was Kevin Mulheron. Feel old yet? <laughs> yeah. One time we're all in like somebody else's class. And it was like a teacher who didn't know how to control us, so we're all talking shit, being kids, and then. Brad Vincent walks by and goes, you're disrespecting your teacher. You all get morning detention tomorrow. And we were like, okay. So we like show up at 7 a.m. for morning detention. We all have to sign in at 7 a.m. And then he was like, if you're over five minutes late, you have to come back again tomorrow. I'm preparing you for the entertainment industry because if you're more than five minutes late to an audition, they won't let you audition. What? Which I learned from multiple actor friends wasn't true. Yeah. Then he sits us all down. He goes, welcome to the breakfast club. <laughs> Which, oh like, my what? God. Oh my God. <laughs> Clearly you never saw the movie. We, like, try to ask questions about why we're here, like, apologize. Right. Yeah. He, like, shuts everything down. He starts playing music from Cabaret, like, loudly. Then he puts headphones in. Then he puts the projector on and starts typing onto the projector everything that he wants to say, like, not speaking. He's just like, this is what happens when you disrespect your teacher. Like, real serial killer shit. And I think he genuinely wanted to carry on with The Breakfast Club, but, like, parents found out about it and shut it down so quick. I feel like I came... Could you imagine being a parent and your kid tells you this happened? Yeah, no, that's that's psychotic. Yeah, I told my dad about it, and he was like... He literally, like, had in his hands, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Have you thought about how many parents have had to receive that story that this guy caused? 
Well, yeah, he was later fired. Yeah, of course. <laughs> for, because the parents did not like him. I think oh then when he was fired, he ended up stealing a bunch of camera equipment from the uh, school. Yeah. Well, now him. I like him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> now yeah. I like him. <laughs> you know, now he's now he's scrappy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now yeah, he's, he's resourceful. Yeah. yeah. He was a short king as well. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Bringing it full circle. Short yeah. King you guys, very strong. deceptive. <laughs> That is a trait of ours. Oh we, we go through a bad breakup, we steal yeah. camera equipment and buy the right manifestos. Why okay. don't we get into listener submissions? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right. Sweet. Yes. So sometimes listeners write in, they ask for advice or they yes. ask for just commentary from us. Oh, nice. I have one pulled up. Nice. So I have this great group of friends. I feel pretty lucky to have them, mostly. But I ah. just went through a breakup and they've been not great about it. For context, my ex was manipulative in ways she really shouldn't have been. As opposed to manipulative in ways, ways she that you should have been. been. Yeah. yeah. My ex was manipulative in ways she shouldn't have been, both with me and things in our relationship and just in general. Every one of my friends has also had some kind of stressful experience with an ex-partner or an ex-best friend. I understand that, and I've helped them all through it. I am not friends with and do not speak to their exes, and those were bad breakups. Not abuse and manipulation as far as I can tell. They all insist on being friends with my ex, and I hate it because she really honestly destroyed my mental health with her shit. What do I do? Dude. What? Trust your gut. If you don't want to be friends with your ex, don't be friends with your ex. Yeah, don't be friends with your ex, but also, like, maybe cut some friends out of your life. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Dude, I went through a breakup one time, and, um, like, like high school breakup to college. Like, I was like, we're going to be adults about this. You know what I mean? And then she went to go play uh, field hockey for <laughs> university. I shouldn't have said the name of the real university. And... <laughs> And then my mom just like I found out my mom was just like going to her games. And she's like, she's just like she was like, I love dude. Why would I do this? And I was oh like, Mom, my God. don't do that. Like, this person should talk to their friends probably. Like, well, the idea though that your mom is just like a connoisseur of field hockey is so yeah. funny to me. I was like, you didn't know what this was. You're from the Philippines. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh American God. sports, so yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, a bad breakup? No, no, no. I still got it. I, I, I love her ball is life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you didn't come to my football games, and you're going to her field hockey games. She fell in love with the game. She what did. What did I say? Yeah. Hockey, baby. And now she's yeah. dating your ex. And she, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a time. A Probably time. a better couple. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That, my mom did not that, but I had a very bad breakup from my first girlfriend, and then yeah. when... And then my ex approached my mom at like a function at my high school and my mom just gave her a big hug oh, and I witnessed it. And I like, I, I was like, I was like, mom, that was very painful to see. And she was like, why? Yeah. And I know. I was, Moms are like psychos yeah. where it's just like, they're like, you don't have feelings at 17. You're like, I have real boners at 17. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, some but not have, feelings. Yeah. But yeah. not feel it's like <laughs> something's attached to something. I don't know. Like. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. This is what this listener should say to their friends. I have real boners. I have right real now. boners. Yes. Okay. And I really And you boners. don't respect it. Right. <laughs> Entirely. And it's like I I well, here's the here's the uh here's the bad advice mm. that you should do. You should wait for all of them to be together and then you should have a really big fight with this person. And then every time everyone hangs out, just continuously have fights with your ex. And then everyone's like, hey, have you guys noticed how like these two like just don't get along basically? And then and then they'll 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 sort it out for you. Mm. That's Ooh, really bad advice. But that's, that's <laughs> no, I think that's, that's really good, good advice. You think? Playing yeah. hot potato, but with a bomb that you're dropping. Yeah, entirely. Yeah. Just start yeah. screaming, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one can, yeah. I think that's all they need to know. For sure. Next submission, you're gonna like this one. How do I tell my girlfriend to stop using her teeth when she kisses? I'm not her first partner, and I don't know how anyone hasn't told her this already. Damn. Um, well, my girlfriend just told me to stop using my teeth when I kiss. That's literally what she, she just came out and was like, hey, using, like, I got our teeth bumped together is what she said. She was like, our teeth oh. bumped together. It really ruins the mood, basically. <laughs> okay. And I think... It's been uh, four years. It's been four, yeah, no, it definitely... This was the beginning, I think. I would like to... This was last week. No, it's like, it's <laughs> I was like, going to say, thank God, okay. No, it wasn't literally. like two minutes ago. She's too much of a trooper for that. Oh, <laughs> like, my God. No, if it was I, four, yeah. yeah, I think you just tell him. I think at the same time. I also, in my defense, can only stick my tongue out like that much, basically. Really? It's like... 
That's it. Because they have, uh, yeah. Because there's like a little thing underneath my tongue that never like it. The broke. frenulum. Apparently, and it didn't break. Like there's some, supposed to be something oh. that breaks, and it never broke for me. And I've never seen the biggest aha moment than when I like fully told like someone else that my girlfriend was present and she did not know that. And she was like, it was literally like, like a dog trying turkey for the first time. You know what I mean? It was literally like her being like, wait a minute, you don't have, like, I don't have to live my life like this. Like basically like you can get this cut and like kissing slash other things could be better. <laughs> could be like, right. I was thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> this is medically necessary, doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With the first, I did go, I did like go see someone to go get it done whenever I was a kid. And he was, uh, he was so nonchalant about it that I didn't, like the doctor was like just in his chair oh my god and he was literally like yeah we can cut that i can do it like right now and i'm like don't i'm pretty i was like if i open my mouth he's gonna take a pair of safety scissors to it like you know <laughs> like <laughs> it's like one time my Crayola dad went to get my dad went to get like a surgery done on his toe and the doctor was trying to do the wrong toe and he was like i'm leaving right now what <laughs> you gotta oh get the my right god. toe yeah that's great wait can that's I, terrifying oh i was gonna say the, i was the last time i was in this uh like on the side of town, I had to go to a doctor about, um, I have a dysfunctional pelvic floor and they wanted to make sure that that's what it was. What does that mean? It takes me a long time to poop. Okay. And, uh, ah. but basically the guy was like, what we're going to do is we're going to, he like sat me down and he was like, what we're going to do is we're going to inflate a small balloon in your, um, in your colon. It's going to make it feel like you have to use the bathroom. Um, and then basically like, if you do, that lets us know the problems like actually in your colon and not in your, in your brain basically. He was like, because, you know, then it could be incontinence. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I was like, it was a totally normal conversation. He's like, there's sensors on the balloon. You're going to have to push like you're using the bathroom. I was like, cool. And then he just goes, he just stops and he goes, by the way, I'm a normal guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> he literally goes, I'm a normal guy. And I was like, what? And he was like, listen, someone had to be the balloon butt guy. And it just happened to be me. And he was like, I had to like put my kids through college basically. And I was like, dude, I signed it. I knew what it was before I came in here. And now like you're, you're being weird. You know what I mean? Like it's already weird. Cause I had to do like, like a, I had to do like a saline enema before I came in here. There's been so many things in my ass right now. And I was like, literally like, why are you being weird, dude? You'd That's be normal. <laughs> do you know what I love about that? It goes to show that everyone is anxious. Yeah. Every single person is going, oh my God, that person is totally war uh, thinking, why do I have this job? Why would I choose to do this? Right. And then everyone's he, in their own head. But That's he was beautiful. like, he was like talking, like, you want to get beers after, dude. Like, like basically he was like, he was like, we could talk through how I ended up being this guy, you know, like basically, and I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? And is he single? <laughs> yeah, he's like a guy with in his this 60s, anxiety like, king. Yeah. Yeah. You like jujitsu? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so god! Oh my god! That is amazing. That, that did not help the list. Or I guess yeah. Just talk to your partner. It it'll be a tough conversation, oh, yeah. but just be like, I still love you. All yeah, right. that's true. All right, I have the third one pulled up. Uh, hello, hosts and guests. I recently started dating this girl, seventeen F, and I am eighteen F. Uh, and oh, so they're 17 and 18 year old girls. All right. Oh. Anyway, we were in a situation ship for about five months. And during those five months, we stopped talking three separate times. But now we have ended up dating. How you might ask? She's hot. And even though she's really annoying, I do like her sometimes. And she's, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and she's good at kissing. Um, but I just don't know what to do. I kind of want to break up with her because she's low key racist. <laughs> and, <What>? just, <laughs> and just never thinks before she speaks. <laughs> Just never thinks before she speaks, but she's also going through a lot at home. Uh, and I don't just want to disappear. I know Gabby <laughs> likes to break up with people when their grandmas die. Yeah. Um, I, I had a breakup happen in college. Uh, a guy's grandma died and I broke up. I uh, Wait, which, I remember you talking. Yeah, yeah circumstances yeah. occurred where I had to break up with him like two yeah. days after. That's so funny. Anyway. Uh, anyways, we are both about to go to different colleges in a couple of months. Do I just stick it out through the summer? Because I do care about her. No. Oy. Well, this this really answers the question, can lesbians be fuckboys? I think so, right? Yeah, I mean, clearly. Yeah. And we that's have what overcome. You, yeah. That's why you have to, like, you have to get in that mindset. This is the most toxic thing, I will say. This is You have to get in that <laughs> mindset of, like, listen, I'm just using this person for their body. So I'm going to make <laughs> as many excuses as I can to just see them in the nighttime. And then I literally not have to deal with him during the daytime because that's when they talk. And like, 
Never go, never go to Froyo. Do you That's sleep with business. vampires? Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? Nighttime is never when the sex happens. Never go to Froyo. Never go to Froyo. Never go to Froyo because that's when people say stuff. That's your first. That's your first strike if you go to Froyo. Yeah. Also, if you're worried about them saying racist stuff, they keep the music real low in Froyo, so it's like literally like it echoes in that place, and it's <laughs> it's not good. Also, don't. I mean. I would feel bad, but if you're just literally like this person's racist, and I'm like, sli- and I'm I'm hooking up with them, I'd be like, yeah, like I don't know, don't let them talk. Basically, like yeah. keep them in places where you don't talk. Go go to movies. You know, yes. do a lot of movies. Do a lot of do a lot of dancing or a concert. Concerts. Oh no, not a black artist. You'll say the word. you'll black, say all yeah. the words. <laughs> well, we don't know who, who, who she's racist against. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Could be anyone. I, I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to. There's some push. weird racism out there. The, I had so, I had someone one time tell me that I wasn't allowed to uh, to date redheads because I was Asian. I was like, I don't even know how to unpack that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking insane, dude. What? And then I was like, that's pretty racist. And Wait, he was who like, said I'm that Jewish. To you? I can't be racist. His name's Reed. Um, <laughs> Fuck Reed. Yeah, fucking he Reed, left dude. our college, but yeah, dude. Was he asked to leave? No, no. I think he just like went okay. somewhere else. He's from okay. anyway. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm saying as much as I can about this guy. Uh, this. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing someone said, but yeah, no, I don't yeah. know. Do that. Use them for their body. Be like that. Be watch American <laughs> Psycho. You know, be like Patrick Bateman. He's got it figured out basically. Like he's got his yeah. life structured, and do do those things. And yeah. I'm obsessed with your advice. I, I love need, this so I need much. you to give off. all of these teenagers this advice. Shut yourself yeah. off. If she looks there's, at you, cross there is an end arms, point. You know? Going to different colleges, there's going to be an end point. There's so. an end point. That's so, the greatest thing is whenever there is when you don't know about a thing and then there's a destination at the end. Yeah, and that's awesome. Yeah. I will say also, I mean, I don't know where you are located in the world, but there are other hot women who are not racist and who are very nice. You could sleep with them, too. See, but here's the thing. What if she's located, like, in the South? And yeah. if you are in the South, the percentages I will are, say yeah. there are very few hot women that aren't racist. And <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Sometimes you just got to deal with it. And yeah. you got to just tell their family that you're Hispanic. And <laughs> that they can get on board with. So... Yeah, and like a border patrol cop. Exactly. Yeah, and they just never meet your mom, and that's fine. And that's okay. <laughs> and that's fine because there's a there's an end point to it. Look, you, what seventeen and eighteen years old, yeah. by the way. Yeah, that's fine. Like you're fine. <laughs> also, when you said seventeen F and eighteen F, I was like, oh, so they live in a <laughs> an apartment like rooms like right next to each other. That's yeah, that's, that's what, what I was I thought. thinking too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh my God. Final segment. Yes. Uh, we have a segment called uh, Self Perception Corner where we ask our guests to describe how they believe they are perceived by other people, and then we say how we actually perceive you. Whoa, that's crazy. I know. We're it's sick pretty in nuts. The head. It's pretty nutty. Um, how would I say that I think I'm perceived by other people? I think other people perceive me as uh, goofy against my will. And I think that is, like, to the degree of me being, like, even when I'm, like, I'm being real serious right now, I'm, like, trying to be tough. People are, like, this is, you're being goofier than you've ever been. And mm. I am trying to lean into that. I don't know. That's how I, that's how I think. What do you guys think? That feels really accurate. That is very good. Whoa, yeah. really? I feel like you really know yourself. Damn. I, that was actually maybe my first impression of you is, like, this is a person who really knows himself and, yeah, like, is so. not afraid to be himself. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, the first time I saw you was your stand-up, and you, like, cr- you like crushed at a pop collar show we were on, and I was like, oh, oh my yeah. God. Like, Dude, that was a fun show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it's always a fun time there. But, I mean, I, I just, like, love a lot of your material. It's so specific. It's so fun and juicy, and also I just... Feel like I don't know. It's just been fun, like getting to know you. And mm. I also I'm I'm realizing through this conversation that you're more of like a dude than I thought. I'm know? not. I'm not. I not at all. I think the the soccer thing is he's the most a dude. Exciting. He's a dude. Hardcore. <laughs> hardcore. Yeah. But I mean, like a like. I, I, I don't know, like, you have unique interest in, like, sports and stuff, and so, I don't know a lot of men like that, but it's cool to, it's uh, cool to talk to one, I, yeah, I know a lot of gays, you know? I think I went to a city where I could be perceived as a bro, but if I in the South, I wouldn't be. But I would, hey, can I say, but I legitimately, like, same for, for both of you guys, legitimately, like, I, um, I was telling Haley, I was like, I saw, obviously, your TikToks before I ever met you as a person, and mm. was like, sorry. <laughs> no, it's what I don't understand. I was like, you're like legitimately funny. And like, there's, I think there's a perception of people who are like, 
we're like, oh, okay, like they're like they, you know, they have a, a social media presence, so they're probably not going to be that funny on stage. And then you, like, the first time I saw you on stage, I was like, first of all, this is a guy who's like going to open mics and working on a thing. Yes. So like, he legitimately cares about it. Second of all, he, and both of you guys, um, just incredible writers. I think the first time that I like, uh, I was really nervous about doing uh, Dan's row show. And uh, mm. I think oh, it sh- yeah. it speaks volumes about both of you guys that like the one clip that he sends out for like context is y'all's roast basically. Oh like, yeah, yeah. We had like, a which really is fun so time. funny. And like I like no one even has to know either of you guys to like watch that and be like this is legitimately just such good writing. And you guys are oh, not just from roasting kind. but also like just in general. Very Thank good you so much. Thank you. Uh, I will say about you, Lucas, mm-hmm. um, because we brought up the TikTok thing. I think like sometimes there is a perception that people on TikTok like just want to build an audience for themselves. And sometimes that's, you meet people who like build an audience for themselves and don't necessarily care about like the craft of stand up, And that's okay. You don't, nobody has to be as psychotic as the three of us are (laughs) about this one thing we like to do. But I also love like always hearing you like work out bits and how much you just like so clearly want. Thank you so much. Do that. You know, that's so sweet. Yeah. Because I, I, I never, I still don't necessarily want to build an audience. <laughs> yeah. like, I still really do just want to get like as good as I you possibly, possibly can. can. Yeah. yeah. But shifting the attention back oh. to you, I don't like the way we diverted that. <laughs> but something else that I wanted to say about you is that I see you as a guy that's very disciplined in a uh, very, in a way true. that it's uh, very admirable. I right. see you as someone that is like very focused on your health. Your writing is super tight. I've okay, never good. seen, I've even when like, Something doesn't, which is rare. If if a joke doesn't hit like quite as, it's I, it's like I always see the structure and I know where it's going to go, oh. and it's so clear. Your writing is so pinpointed. It's just it's so clear that you have like a method and effort put into every aspect of your life. At least that's how it seems to me, and that's something that I admire extraordinarily. Thanks, yo. I yeah, it. except yeah. when you're getting high at the portrait museum. Yeah, no, I had, I had no direction at that point. Also, <laughs> which is a disciplined guy move. Being like, no, I'm gonna get high and go to the portrait gallery. That's yeah. like, <laughs> that is that is an educated man. That I is think the that's guy. Why I think that's the issue with the smoking weed is like me being like, I would enjoy a cheeseburger, but I would also like pizza. Like, <laughs> you can only choose one, and then being like. <laughs> This is this, yeah. is, and you're just being like, but if I walk there, I can burn cow. You know, like you're just being like, yeah, this yeah. Is what but you're not the froyo. Yeah, <laughs> not for, yeah, no, I hate froyo, dude. Oh, yeah. But yeah, Hayden, you've been an amazing guest. Thank this you so has much been for so coming. much fun. What what's going on? Do you have shows? Do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have uh, yeah, airstream comedy. You're Fuck gonna yeah. be on uh tomorrow. That's tomorrow. This, this, yeah, yeah, this, no, this, this will come out tomorrow. Thursday, I believe. So it'll come out this Thursday. Episode. Okay, come and out then on uh, uh, this following Tuesday, kind of live Brooklyn. Uh, <gasps> yes. it's a really good show in Cobble Hill. If anyone's interested. Indeed. Also, yeah. if you're in D.C., go to Kind of Live in D.C., which yeah. is a wonderful show that I did last weekend. Kind of Live show. Comedy. Yeah. Kind of Live Comedy. All right. <laughs> We've Thank- been Two Nosy Meerkats. We love you so much. Thank you to Hayden. Thank you. Thank you to Stand Up New York. Thanks, Thank guys. you to Haley. See you Thank next you. time. See you next time. <laughs>